So how do we as parents keep it real? Talk to our children about these issues and hopefully help them navigate the issues better than some of the adults. Well, folks at one DC public school recognized that dynamics of their school were changing. Ann Beers Elementary School and Ward 7's Southeast DC is a majority black school, but in the last several years, more white families have enrolled. Teachers and parents knew they needed to address this change. So on Tuesday, world-renowned anti-racism educator and activist Jane Elliott did a diversity workshop with the children at the Ward 7 school. And then that evening, she held a master class with about 250 adults in the community, including many parents and teachers. Do you have any idea what a dream is fulfilled by an old white woman when black people who know a whole lot are willing to take an evening and spend it listening to that old white woman who doesn't know a millionth of what these black women know about racism. So turn to the person on your right, stick out your hand and say hello cousin. And this is why they came. This old white woman is Jane Elliott, and she has spent her career schooling people on racism. And it all started in the classroom. It was 1968. Elliott was a third grade teacher in Iowa. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had just been killed. Deeply moved by the tragedy, she decided there was only one way to teach her white students about discrimination. You think you know how I would feel to be judged by the color of your skin? Yeah. I don't, do you think you do? No, I don't think you'd know how that felt unless you had been through it, would you? <laughs> it might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? Yeah. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? The kids soon realized it wasn't fun at all, at least for the group that was discriminated against first. This is the famous blue eyes, brown eyes exercise. The brown eyed people do not get to use the drinking fountain. You'll have to use the paper cups. You brown-eyed people are not to play with the blue-eyed people on the playground. It didn't take long for friends to turn on each other. The brown-eyed students were humiliated, angry, and simply stopped trying. The blue-eyed students turned into bullies. I watched what had been marvelous, cooperative, wonderful, thoughtful children turn into nasty, vicious, discriminating little third graders in a space of 15 minutes. The exercise was life changing for those involved who, as adults, said all schools should implement the exercise to teach children about discrimination, empathy and respect. It was groundbreaking, but don't call it courageous. Don't think for one minute that it takes a lot of courage to do what I do. If I had been a black woman the day I did that exercise with my third graders in all white, all Christian Riceville, Iowa, I wouldn't have lived through the night. I know that. I know that no black woman would be permitted to say what I say and do what I do, even though they know more of it than I do. Do you realize how unfair this is? It still affects me. Do you realize how unjust this is? And do you realize how immoral this is? It's not just unchristian, it's immoral. And it has to stop. Now, every person in this room who considers himself or herself a member of the yellow race, please stand. Her mission to eradicate no, ignorance, no, 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 that is racism. Her message, there is only one race. race. There's only one race in this room right now. There's only one race of people on the face of the earth. It's the human race. You are all members of the same race. It takes a lot of guts. Um, and persistence to do what you do no, it in doesn't. the light and well in the light of a lot of criticism no, over the years. No, no, it doesn't. Criticism doesn't bother me. I just consider the source. No, if, if these blacks had criticized me tonight, I'd have to listen to it. But when whites criticize what I do where racism is concerned, I don't listen to it because they're speaking out of ignorance, total ignorance, because they have been taught the lie of the rightness of whiteness and they're ignorant and they need to be educated. What do we need to tell our children? What you need to tell your children is don't let anyone else define you. Don't let anyone else tell you how good you are, how smart you are, how capable you are, how worthwhile you are, whether or not God loves you. You know, you know what your children are and you tell them good things and you see to it that they believe those good things. And we all need to feed our children those messages of empowerment. Full disclosure, 
I'm a former PTO president at Ann Beers Elementary School. I did not organize this event, but Ayanna Smith, who's a parent at the school, did organize the event. 250 parents. Um, when I spoke to Jane Elliott, she said, I was moved that these um, a, a majority black audience came here to listen to an old white woman talk about race. So you reached out to her. You were surprised that she responded. Yeah. Why did you reach out? Well, the main reason I reached out is because I wanted our families to, to kind of get ahead of the issue. Mm -hmm. um, the main focus for her visit was to work with our students and to help them navigate these conversations uh, so that they can have them in an honest and respectful way. Um, and I, you know, I think that a lot of parents project their fears on, onto children. Um, I don't think kids are afraid to have these conversations. I think parents are afraid to have the conversations and they pro project that onto kids. Kids are terribly honest and they say what's on their mind and sometimes they can be a little reckless with their thoughts. So our goal was to help them navigate these conversations so that they're not reckless and that they're respectful and loving. Well, like yeah. she said, you know, you don't, um, you're not born a racist, you right. know, that's learned behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and one message that I took away from that was that, you know, we're, there's one race, it's the human race. Um, and is that a message that you teach your own children at home? Absolutely. Um, my, my children are very aware of their skin color and some of the, uh, you know, oppression that comes along with being a person of color, but they also, um, are aware also we teach them that we're all part of the human race and we t we treat any, everyone with respect regardless of their skin color. So this was the, the beginning of the conversation. Yes. Much we, more to come. It was uh, uncomfortable for some. I mean Jane Elliott got in folks faces and she got a little spicy yeah. at times um, and and some folks you know like you said are apprehensive to talk about this issue. Yeah. Um, so where do we go from here? I think a lot of other conversations need to be had uh, our focus as parents at Beers is having the conversation with our children and teaching our children how to, ha how to have those conversations. And uh, we're actually discussing uh, having a conversation series, uh, ongoing conversation sh series when the new school year starts. That's definitely a goal. And um, being able to engage with uh, students in other schools in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the demographic change at Beers and we know it will continue to happen and it's fine. Um, we just have to teach our children how to work together. Yeah, not just adult issues, kid yeah. issues. They take it home. We right. need to teach them how to navigate these issues. Thank you so right. much, Ayanna Smith, Thanks for, for coming me. in and for organizing Jane Elliott at the school. We all took a lot from uh, her talk yeah. there, and hopefully a lot of people will have those conversations at home and in the community and in their schools as well.